All right, we're here. You're here because you decided that you want to learn Unreal Engine 5. Yes. And this moment is the moment where you change your life if you do decide to finish this tutorial series, the Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial series. And trust me, by the end of this course, you will be able to create the dopest Star Wars cinematic without having any knowledge of Unreal Engine 5 whatsoever. Now, we discussed this in the very beginning intro video yes. that if you had a Blender or Cinema 4D or Houdini or Maya background, it would be helpful. But even if you don't, don't worry. We're going to make sure we hold your hands and walk through it all together. That's why our first chapter is our easiest chapter. We are going to walk you through the download, the installation, and we're going to walk you through some templates. Let's go. Let's do this. Farhan? Let's go. Perfect. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and download Unreal Engine for the first time, you want to go ahead and open your browser. Do not use Microsoft Edge. I don't know what What are this you looking is. at? I don't know what this is. This is like default. I don't even use the, the Microsoft Edge. I'm just using it because my Chrome is filled up and I don't want to open it up. So you want to go ahead and search for Unreal Engine in your Google. And once you click on the top link, you'll be presented with this page. Go to the top right, hit download, and you'll be able to download the launcher. And once you click this, it downloads it. As you can see, oh my God, I downloaded multiple times. It's okay. And I'm going to close it. You're going to be going into the launcher. And as soon as you open it up, you'll be presented with this. Isn't it the same place that you play games? Absolutely. Yes, it's very distracting. So just a little background for anybody that is unfamiliar and is not a gamer. Unreal Engine was a game engine. And so by default, they put it in the same place where people actually play the games of Epic Games, the parent company's Epic Games. And so you'll first see all of these games. You'll get distracted because you want to play them. But then... Don't. 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 We want to turn your attention to Unreal Engine right here on the left side. This is for the developers, for the artists that are creating the games, creating the cinematics. So there are a bunch of tabs at the top. Let's quickly go through them, right? First is news. This is where you'll see all the updates of Unreal Engine. Right now, we're at 5.3 at the time of this recording. And at the bottom, you'll see featured content of people who created dope things. Have you ever been featured? Absolutely, we have. <laughs> we're not showing off right now, though. Um, the next is samples. This is actually super cool. So Epic Games themselves, they develop many sample projects to show off some of the features that come with the latest updates. The best way you can learn Unreal Engine is go ahead and download these sample projects and try to reverse engineer how they built those sample scenes. We do this all the time. So the next thing I'm going to turn your attention to is the marketplace. This is where people like us, like you, go ahead and create environments, assets, materials, sound effects that you can go ahead and download for free or purchase. Now, the coolest thing that you should pay attention to is the free section. Here in the free for the month, Epic Games actually sets out five different packs from different developers for free that you can download. Now, this is something you have to look out for because every month it rotates. And if you don't download them, you'll lose them. You lose them. You don't want that. Now we're going to go to library. Twin motion is for, I believe, architecture. We're not going to touch that. This is where you will have all of your Unreal Engine project files. And at the top here, you're looking at the engine versions. So Farad, where are we at right now? We are at 5.3.2 at the time of recording. Yes. So if this is 5.3.3 or 4, it's fine because you're watching this at a later date. Just go ahead and download that. So the engine version that you want to go ahead and download, you'll be able to do that by clicking this plus icon. And you can download many different engine versions to work on at the same time. Why would they let you download an older version? Well, the older versions are probably more stable, less buggy. And so that's why you're allowed to do that. Plus, if you're developing your game, let's say on Unreal Engine 5.2.1, you might not want to go ahead and keep updating it to add bugs to your game. So that's why you can have multiple versions. Here in the dropdown, you'll be able to choose the engine version that you want. And you can go as far as 4.26. That's that's like really old. Don't I don't recommend you doing that if this is your first time. You know, for this tutorial, they can download the latest version. That's right. So what you want to go ahead and do is go ahead and click install. Now, here's a little tip that we have for you guys. You can go ahead and choose the folder location according to your computer, but make sure you go ahead and check the options section out. 
And this is really important because Unreal Engine 5 at its core is a game engine. And so if you scroll down, you'll see that you're downloading about 21, 22 gigabytes of data just to have target platforms like Android com compatibility, Linux iOS. or iOS compatibility in your system. That's for you if you're trying to create apps. We are not trying to do that. So you can go ahead and uncheck, 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 save yourself some space. Yes. And then hit apply and then install. Boom. Wait, listen. Did you know that you can create highly photorealistic scenes with photogrammetry by taking in what exists in the real world into 3D? We've been using Polycam to do exactly that using our phone and drone. Yes, that's right. And guess what? They sponsored this video to give you guys 30% off their pro plan. So you guys can go ahead and try it for yourself. Use the code bad decisions in the link in the description. Back to the course. Once you have your engine installed, Farhad, as you can see, it's right there for you to click launch. But before we go ahead and do that, I just want to show you guys what's down here. In the My Projects, you're looking at all of your recent projects that you've created. Now, Farhad, why do we have so many Star Wars uh, projects over because there? Because we have recreated these scenes more than 10 times to get ready for this tutorial. We've, we've prepared, yes. right? And in the bottom part right here, you're looking at your vault. Now, don't be afraid if your vault is empty. You are probably poor right now because you have absolutely nothing here. These are all of those free packs that we downloaded every month from the marketplace. And all of them are here. Once you go ahead and download those packs, you can then add them to any of your project that is already created. We are not going to do that, however, for this course because it's a beginner tutorial series and we're not going to need any of those. So Farhad, are we ready to do this? Let's click launch right now. Okay. So there's two ways, right? You can click it right here or at the top over there. We're just going to do it in right here. We're going to click launch and we're going to be presented with this right here. So Farhad, you know this. This usually takes a lot of time in the beginning, right? Yes. It does. And it's because Unreal Engine is trying to compile a lot of different files in order to create your project. Now it does it twice. Once when you're trying to launch for this menu right here, and once when you create your project. So right now, on the left side, Fire, what are we looking at? We are looking at our templates. Right? These are the different templates that we can begin with. We have the games template, which comes with its own sets of variables to begin with. We've got film, video, live events, architecture, automotive, and simulation. And frankly, we've never used any of them. We just go directly to film, video, live events, and start with a blank project. If I start with a game template or an automotive template, can I change the settings inside and make it a film or architecture? Absolutely. The base of the engine itself is the same. All you're doing is just add in some extra functions that allow you to create, for example, a game. For instance, for the game, you have the third-person mode. It comes with some of the basic animations and the third-person mode that you can just go ahead and create and drop in your scene so you can walk around your scene. And just like Farad said, don't be afraid. Later, we're going to teach you exactly how you can add these features. But we always like to start with a blank project so we don't have all these files populated in our scene. On the right side, there's two check marks. We've got the starter content and ray tracing. Starter content is basically, just like the name suggests, a few different packs that you can begin your project with, like a few materials, a few architectural packs, like walls, floors. It just makes your life easier when you're trying to start out your scenes. We always go ahead and turn them on because it's really useful to have. However, we're going to keep it unchecked for this moment because I want to teach you guys how to bring it in if you forgot to check it here, just like your other packs. Ray tracing, however, is a option that we're going to add and check right here because it's going to enable ray tracing settings. We are running an RTX 4090. Are you bragging? Sort of. Yes. <laughs> but that's okay, right? Yeah. If you guys have a strong RTX card, we recommend you guys go ahead and check this. If you guys do not have a strong graphics card, you do not have to check this. It's just going to enable you to have better lighting and better shadows when you're in engine. Now, Farhad, where do you want to save this? C? Yeah, let's do it in C drive. Okay, so we're going to go to C drive. We already have a place open, so Unreal Engine beginner project file, and we're going to select a folder. And then all we have to do is go ahead and name our folder. Farah, what, what name should we give it? Should, should it be Star Wars Final? Finally? Is this really is the it, final? I think it's the final one. Okay, yeah. Star Wars Final. By now, the way, you guys cannot put space in yeah. the naming. Yeah, you yeah. see that? I tried to put space, doesn't work. So Star Wars, we can do like dash or underline, and then final. Hit Create. 
And this is the second time you're going to see this pop-up menu. And if you look closely, it's going to take a while for it to open. According to your computer, this might vary. This is probably the only thing about Unreal Engine that annoys people, which is just the amount of time it takes to load. And why is it loading so, so fast? Fun. Usually it takes longer, <laughs> right? Usually yeah, it takes longer. Yeah, yeah. If yours has this bracket and it, there's a number in there like 800 and it's slowly going down, that's fine. It happens to us all the time. Just let it load. Usually only happens in the first time you're trying to load your project and only when you're making major changes to your rendering settings and things of that sort. So Usually Farhan, it says compiling shader, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Time. But that's okay, right? You just yep. wait one or two times and then it's good. So yep. that's it for our first chapter. Congratulations. You guys finished the first chapter. Now we are going to chapter two. What are we going to do in chapter two? In chapter two, we are going to go over the viewport. We are going to look at the navigation and we are going to get started in Unreal Engine.